Right, watch up. Welcome back to Del Boy's Garage. Now I'm just going to very quickly do something that um, can't be any easier. It really can't. Replacing the air filter on your Triumph Scrambler or Bonneville or Thruxton. They're exactly the same. It's an air box that lives here. Whether you've got carburetors or whether you've got fuel injection, it's exactly the same system. And it lives underneath here. Your air, replacing your air filter is one of your service jobs. It has to be done every 5,000 miles because very cleverly, uh, Triumph, like all other manufacturers, put a throwaway filter in. And I just don't understand that, I really don't, because personally, I always upgrade my filter on any bike I've got to a K&N or sort of. Uh, there are plenty of other products uh, on the market like K&Ns and you can use any of them. But the principle here is a washable filter nonetheless, purely because I just, as I said, don't get my head around why the manufacturer puts a disposable filter on a motorcycle which needs replacing every 5,000 miles. I don't understand it. It's not very green, is it? Let's think about it. It's landfill, you're throwing that thing away. It contains metal parts and paper, and it just has to be recycled. Whereas if you buy yourself a washable K&N type filter, uh, and there are many other makes just as good as, uh, I'm just choosing a K&N because I've got a good deal on it, uh, that can just be washed. So every time it comes around for service, you simply take this out, wash it, put it back in. To me, that's just basic common sense, isn't it? Anyway, there we go. This is how you change it. Stick around, stay tuned. On all of these bikes, the left-hand side panel is your access point. You've got a little screw underneath here, which is, a, it's a coin screw. Basically, it's got a curve to the slot. You can put a coin in and undo it, but I don't like to do that because, personally, you can scratch the frame there with the coin. So just take that one out. Keep it safe. And then the side panel comes off by lifting off at the bottom and it's got two pegs at the top that point upwards. So a little lift and away it comes. All right, and always pop it down that way so you don't scratch your panel. Next to it. Now, if you like me, you tend to kick things around the garage. It doesn't hurt like that, just to pop that back in its screw hole so you don't lose it. And that's served me so many times when you come to the end of a job to rebuild, you can't find the fast. All right, okay, now underneath here, you access what you see. This is what you see when you when when you open it up. You've got some electrical components here, starter relays, that sort of things, uh, flashes, solenoids, all sorts of bits and pieces there. And oddly enough, they're only there for somewhere to store them. They don't really need to be there. You've got a little Allen key here, which is for taking your seat off. So all this, literally, if you lift it upwards, it sits on these little rubber doodads that push down onto a peg. So you can lift them off. One two and this one a three comes backwards like that and then the whole lot could just be moved down here out the way so that gives you loads of access to this which is where we're going and there's an eight mil three eight mil bolts that hold this cap on and one of them has got a little plastic clip there you need to be careful not to lose that so that wires out the way as well and when we put it back in we'll clip that back in there all this is to do is just to keep them out of the way. So now we've got access. This is the port we're going into to take the filter out. So let's get a screw, uh, well, a, a socket driver to take these off. They're eight mil metric Three sockets. Three screws, as we said. One down here, one there, and one there. So we just take them off. And they're not done up tight because they are a, a metal thread inside a plastic casing. So don't lean on a monkey boy because you will break them. Now that comes off with this little clip to so keep it safe. And one. Now be careful as well, obviously your frame rail is right there and it's painted or powder coated so be careful of all these kind of threads and stuff you don't scratch it, there's one in under there that one's a little bit hidden by the frame which is very clever design and it comes out there too Okay, now we just withdraw the cap itself. And it's just got a rubber kind of stiction seal to it, just kind of where it gets a bit sticky from the factory. And that comes out with a little snorkel on the inside. I'm not doing anything to that, I'm just going to refit that in a minute as it is. But check around the seal if your bike's done a lot of miles, you're looking for anything leaking there or any water in it, should be fine. This is a newish bike. And here we are, there's the filter. Now, at this point, it's a wise idea to take a piece of cloth, I'll show you why in a sec, and just tuck it in around there. Get it with your fingers on the inside. 
and actually fold it if you can around that. That's what I always tend to do because I'll show you why. As you just pull that out of the way and the filter just comes out like that. But it comes out very close to this. In fact, almost up against it. And as you can clearly see, that's a cheese grater and that's definitely going to tattoo your paint there. So being careful now, again, that's a throw away item. I really don't understand why today's modern manufacturers haven't stepped up and started replacing these at factory level with washables. Honestly, isn't it? How daft can it be? But who am I to question the mighty Triumph? But it isn't just Triumph. Every manufacturer does this. I've put one of these in the Bandit, I've put one in Penny's Harley, and just the Hayabusa had one. And I don't think there's a bike that Harley, that, that k &N do not make a filter for. They make a million filters. They're guaranteed, I think, for a million miles or something like that. And you just keep washing them. And one thing which I do like is when you look up at the light through your standard filter, and then you look through that, you can clearly see that they're less restrictive. So I want to quickly come to that. With a filter, the amount of um, resistance with which they allow the air to pass through is decreased with a k &N. That will breathe easier. So to suck air through that is easier. But a fuel-injected bike has a map that will adjust, unlike carburetted bikes, which you may need to adjust the jets. But provided you're keeping your air box completely standard, you're not changing anything. You're not changing the snorkel. You're not changing any of the baffle plates or baffle tubes inside. As long as you're leaving the air box alone and you're just refitting a panel filter or a tube cone filter, that's fine. This is what you might refer to as the element. The element of your fuel, your air filter is fine to replace without rejetting, remapping, or worrying about the fueling. It will simply work fine. It's then when you start messing around with the air box, you need to consider that sort of stuff. But for now, we're fine. So there we are. Okay, Let's get same, it same drill again, because it is a little bit grating. And we put the open end facing out, obviously. It doesn't matter whether it goes one way up or the other, it's universal, unidirectional. Put that in. As you can see, it does rub against the frame a little bit. That's in. There we are. Now, once that's right home and fixed, take that out of the way. Snorkel back in. And it is as simple as that, folks. That's it. Put the bolts back in. Now you will find that the cap itself is a real tight fit against the filter. Um, that's because it it presses its way in. It actually must be under some pressure. The rubber seals each end. It has to force it in to prevent air leakage. Make sure that little clip one goes back on the original place it was in. And do them up evenly, all three, like you do. Just get into the habit of that, really. Now, I always have a little bit of a, I would imagine if you if you really want to be OCD, there's a torque setting for these. But all I do is get to the point where they seat and then give them a quarter of a turn. So where that touches from there, quarter of a turn. And that's always enough. It's enough for it to go in and, and seal against it. I need a bit more. That's better. That's it. And you'll feel them. Just feel them with, with a little bit of resistance. And you'll feel that they all feel about the same. So you get a nice even draw up. And that's all completely sealed. There we are. Pop the wire back in. It's there. And with this wire here, it goes in behind that clip, like that, lift this wiring up above where it was, now those two sp little spigots there go on these two slots, now I'll stand up and look at it, right, if it's uh, not quite going to fit or if these won't go on, what I've used in these, a little bit of furniture polish in the back there sometimes. It slips on nicely, but it doesn't leave a residue, it dries away. And then that one finally in place. That's 
Sí. There we are. So that's the contents under there, all completely replaced. Just make sure there's nothing in front of the air intake that's going to bung it up. And then we pop on the side panel. Easy to find the screw because we put it back. And there we are, you've got the two pegs at the top, which go in these two holes first. Then after that, that just swings in to its seat. Yep. Pigtail out of the way. They sit firmly down on there. Screw in. Okay, there we are. It's as simple as that. The easiest upgrade you can make on your bike. Every motorcycle out there will have an access panel like that to the air filter. It's a service item. It has to be replaced by the service technician every time you take it to the dealer, every service interval. So upgrade. Why, re why refit? Why purchase one of these? That K&N filter was about, how much was that, 35? About 35 pounds posted, mail order. These things I would imagine from Triumph. I don't know. I'll stand corrected. They're probably about 25, 30 pounds for one of those. And that you throw it away. Whereas that, that's there for life now. I'll keep that filter for as long as I keep the bike and I intend to do 100,000 miles. So watch this space. This bike's done 1,100 miles at the moment. I intend to do 100,000 miles on it. It might be 10 years from now, but I'll revisit this and show you it. It is a filter that will last forever. Just keep washing it. All you do is warm soapy water, wash them off, and you don't even have to re-oil them. There is a K&N cleaning solvent you can buy and then an oil you spray on them, but to be honest, I've never bothered with it. I just use a very mild dish soap that you wash all the dirt out, leave it to dry, air dry, and then slide it back in once it's bone dry. Never had a problem in many, many years. If you live in an extremely dusty environment, I always have the view that if you oil a filter, you'll attract more dirt to stick and build up like a thickness and then reduce your air intake. And that's not very good. It starts to make the bike run rich and so on. But personally, I think a dry filter is better. You can take it out when it's extreme, bang it out, put it back in. And that's a better way to do it. It gives you a roadside serviceability you don't have if it's oily. Anyway, there we go. It's a very easy upgrade, and I want you to think about it because you don't need to do anything else. Anybody worried about it, you might have to remap or rejet your carbs or anything, you really don't. As long as it's just this part, just the element that you're replacing, that's absolutely fine. The bike will remap itself if there's any needed. Uh, to be honest, it usually isn't. I put a K&M panel filter in the Hayabusa we recently had. There's one in Penny's Harley inside the airbox, and there's one in, obviously, Project Bandit. That's just because I believe in them. Now, that brings me to the next point. Yes, indeed, we've done a whole gratuitous plug. k and they're great, you know, but it's not the case. We're not plugging k and filters in the sense for the commercial reasons. We haven't heard from k and We haven't done this for commercial reasons. Somebody, a friend of mine, a close friend, recently accused me of being a little bit commercial. Well, honestly, we're not. We don't do this to make any money. Nobody pays us anything for this. This is simply, I want to project it to you. Those of you new riders who use the videos to benefit, to keep your bike safe, to save a little bit of money and to take on your own servicing, you need to know this is important information and we need to spread the word. That's what bikers do. That's what the whole community of motorcycle riders do. Spread information amongst ourselves. It's not free, it belongs to all of us. So a K&M filter, it's not a commercial thing. I'm not doing this to promote it. Nobody paid us to do this. It's simply something I believe in and I want to project that to you. And these videos hopefully will help the new rider and the returning rider keep their bikes safe on the road and their money in the pocket where it belongs. Okay? So that's it for now. Anything else, Ben? No. Take it easy. Ride safe. See you next time.